Welcome to GSAP and welcome to Urban Planning Program at GSAP. I'm Wei Ping Wu, the Program Director for the Masters of Science in Urban Planning. And uh, in this hour, first I will make a really quick presentation about the program, the curriculum, but also answer a number of questions many of you have posted. Then I will invite um, a number of our current students to answer your questions and engage in a more lively discussion. So here's GSAP, our home. And, um, but first I would like to say welcome to New York. And we're very um, excited about opportunities that New York offers to studying urban planning. And some of you are interested, like, you know, this is a huge city. What do you do? What do you observe? How are our students engaged with this city? And there's Columbia University. And New York has had a quite unique and long history of urban planning. As you might know, zoning, for instance, originated in New York City in 1996. And today in one of our courses, zoning, and we continue to look at not only the history, but how the city deals with the zoning issues. And, and it's very unique process of making changes and what we call the ULERP process. That's just an example. New York also is situated um, at a very critical point that will intersect with the uh, uh, sea level rise as well as um, uh, efforts to, um, to live with that. So in fact, last night we had a, a very uh, provocative lecture by one of the top thinkers on urban issues, Professor Richard um, uh, we talked about how some of the designs, for instance, rebuild by design, may be problematic. So in both the classroom as well as uh, beyond the classroom, New York is a major uh, case study for our students, topics for studios, topics for thesis. For instance, we're looking at also New York as one of the most divided or unequal cities, not only in, United, in the United States, perhaps around the world. So here's a happy group of studio uh, students uh, doing um, studio project in our very neighborhood backyard, Harlem. So urban planning at Columbia, much um, you know, parallel to the history of uh, Columbia, this university has a long history, as you can see here. If you're interested, obviously, I can, we can share some of these history with you in more detail later. And currently, we have a number of core faculties who are very active in scholarship, in uh, generating new knowledge, and in working with students not only in uh, courses, but also in research. So I would like to introduce to you our core faculty here. And uh, our general strength, as you can tell also from the expertise areas of these uh, core faculty members, are in four areas. And then I will identify those a little bit later in detail. These are built environment, uh, community and economic development, international planning and development, and urban analytics. So these faculty, uh, core faculty teach very much in the core curriculum, meaning the core courses, but they also take on research assistance, every one of them every year. So a number of our students get to work with them. And later on, I can ask one of our current students to um, tell you a little bit more about her experience working with the faculty. We are also really very proud, uh, because we are in New York and we are in the thick of uh, planning practice, we have a wonderful um, uh, group and community of um, adjunct faculty. Uh, we number them roughly in the mid-30s, which is quite large. And uh, they are full-time practitioners in New York and beyond. They are in private sector, public sector, nonprofit sector, and some have had experience and continue to in international institutions. So I'm just listing a few of them as example, as you can see the kind of work they're engaged in, in their day job, uh, day jobs, and then at night, primarily at night, and sometimes during the day, they come in and teach both 
some of the core courses, such as studios, such as planning law, and economics for urban planners, as well as many, many electives. And uh, they teach courses on economic development, uh, on social entrepreneurship, on mega projects in global cities, on infrastructure policy in developing countries and globally, many, many different topics. And so we are able to create a lot of agility in the curriculum through this group of uh, very active practitioners who are very much connected to practice. And so, um, and our students really enjoy that connection as well, not only in terms of learning uh, knowledge that is grounded in practice, but also uh, in getting opportunities for internships and potentially jobs. And so some of you uh, may be interested in that and will be happy to connect you with some of these uh, adjunct faculty. If you want to sit in a class, or so, so just reach out to us. And very quickly, the program is accredited by the Planning Accreditation Board. It's a two year with 60 points. And we, have, we are very glad to say that the, our curriculum is very flexible in that uh, the required courses are less than half of the credits. And then in the electives, 33 of points of them at least 12 points need to be in the concentration, and then everything else that you can take course, courses across GSAP and Columbia. And then I, I will ask some of our uh, student panel members to uh, talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. As I mentioned, we have four concentrations. And so here I know some of you have questions about how different, how similar, uh, we are at Columbia Urban Planning from other planning programs. So let me just take the example of MIT's planning program as a comparison. So MIT has much, much larger full-time faculty and, uh, uh, and it covers really every single almost topics um, in planning and they are able to do so because of their large full-time faculty. We are, on the other hand, um, really take advantage of our agility, our location in New York City, our location in a design school to focus um, more on the built environment, our first concentration, community and economic development. In fact, that concentration is our highlight, uh, you know, uh, focus area for addressing social justice issues. Uh, nonetheless, the social justice theme cuts across the entire curriculum, particularly through the core curriculum. We also are very, very proud of our international and global outlook. And in that concentration, we have a number of courses that take a largely comparative perspective. That is to say, we don't necessarily focus on particular regions. We do, for instance, have a course on China, but mostly we are helping our students to understand sometimes different cities in different regions face similar planning or urban challenges, and they may or may not take the same approaches in their uh, solutions or um, responses because local context matters and because local governance structure matters. We are also in this concentration look at some of the cross-cutting global themes such as uh, uh, climate change and such as um, uh, the movement of people in terms of immigration. And then last and our most recent uh, concentration, urban analytics, is a growing strength of not only the program, but also the school. We are very strong in terms of using data science, visualization, and urban tech in looking critically at how data uh, may or may not improve urban operation as well as access by different groups of urban residents to services and to other types of urban amenities. And so this, um, so with these four concentrations, most of our students, essentially, uh, you can see the first year, uh, students very much focus on uh, core courses. And the studio, for instance, is a very intensive experience in the second semester of uh, first year. Um, 
about half of the students actually get to travel overseas to do travel studios. And then in their second year, um, they really can have a lot of freedom in taking courses both related to their concentration and beyond. So the first contact point with the concentrations uh, would be just before the end of your first semester and first year here. Because at that time, we pitch the different studio projects to students, and then students will need to tell us in the program about their gener you know, general interest in whichever concentration. Or two, some of our students actually, almost half of our students choose two concentrations, and we have a single faculty member for each concentration as advisor. So at the end of fall semester or first, uh, first year, they have a contact. Then I, we generally encourage our students to really explore the curriculum. And so by the end of second year fall semester, they will then need to tell us exactly you know, their concentration is or concentrations are. So there's quite a bit of flexibility. There's a lot of exploration. But our students, by their second year, when they are doing either a thesis or capstone, they are quite certain about their um, uh, directions of um, somewhat what we call um, specialty. And then we also offer a number of dual degrees. And I know some of you have asked questions about other types of dual degrees. At this point, we don't have uh, other types of uh, dual degrees besides what we have on the screen, it's actually quite a bit. In fact, I think our program is probably has probably the largest number of a dual degree uh, arrangements with both programs within GSAP as well as schools across um, uh, Columbia. So every year we have about a half dozen students or up to about eight or nine every year who are pursuing dual degree students. Uh, so program, we have. I'll, I'll ask one of our current students to uh, address that if uh, in a little bit later. So here, I wanted just to highlight really quickly the kind of courses that we have in each concentration. So every single semester, when our students uh, are ready to register for next semester, we give them uh, these uh, concentration course lists. And then just before the enroll at orientation, I also give them a two-year schedule of elective courses so that they can plan for the two years they are here. So these are just some examples. So stay tuned, because we have new courses almost every semester. So this list may get upgraded uh, when you come in. And so you can see the global opportunities our students have are beyond classroom. This is studio in Rio uh, in Brazil studio in Hong Kong, uh, and then studio in Chile on different topics. So when we do studios each spring, we try to make sure the five or six studios cover a range of topics so that our students who want to specialize somewhat can have their choices. And then GSAP also offers additional global opportunities through the summer workshop program. Um, and here are the courses related to built environment concentration. We have actually a number of courses that cut across uh, concentrations, such as um, uh, in this here, um, you can see, um, not quite in this here. Ah, I'll give you an example in a little bit. And uh, these are some works our students have done in our studio related to built environment. As you can see, we uh, a quite a number of our students have architectural background uh, and has very high level of uh, visual competency. Throughout our program, however, we really also enhance our students' basic skills, right? Visual uh, competency, writing, we have a course on writing, we have a course on project management. So in addition to these focus on different uh, concentrations, we have a cross-cutting set of skill-based courses to help our students. And these are just some examples. And then our third concentration, community and economic development. And so you can see here a number of different courses and some are on politics, and some are on um, infrastructure, and various different kinds of courses uh, across the board. And these are some works 
examples, work examples our students have done in their studio work. This is on Hong Kong, in terms of looking at how communities can get together through an online platform, and our studio project in Harlem, paying particular attention to how different kinds of social economic dynamics play out throughout time in this neighborhood. And last but not least are our urban analytics um, uh, course, courses. So for instance, the dig digital restructuring of urban space could easily also qualify for a build environment uh, concentration. We're working towards that direction to have more courses that can uh, have this cross-cutting uh, coverages um, in our curriculum. And these are some, again, work examples by our students in using big data, sometimes in combination with conventional data, to look at geographical patterns uh, of really important planning issues. So the, the urban analytics um, concentration has these courses and projects within courses that are not sort of situated in a vacuum. Rather, they are very much constant, uh, related to very important questions in planning, some, such as climate change, sea level rise. Uh, for instance, this one here, measuring social vulnerability in flooding events in New York City. So we are also, so in addition to curriculum and uh, uh, connection with practices and to research, as well as global outlook, we spend a great deal of time helping and working with our students on their next step, right? We call, sort of in a way, um, cradle to graves, not to graves, right? At least student to professional transition. So we have a number of different programs in addition to um, sort of course-related visits to different institutions. So this uh, image you see is a course-related uh, trip to Washington, D.C., visiting some international organizations and studio related contacts with um, uh, New York City agencies. We organize um, alumni panels to really reflect on their different career paths in public, private, and nonprofit sectors as well as at local, state, federal, and international levels. And our very active international student organization also organized their own career activities uh, reflecting on the path of international students, particularly those from China uh, after school. Uh, and then we, every year we organize a career uh, fair. It's more of information types of interview. We have, again, employers from public, private, and nonprofit sectors and local and federal levels to come in and talk to our students about what they um, are engaged in. And our students have opportunity to engage in some uh, informational uh, interviews. Uh, and these are not meant to be career fairs that will actually turn into jobs. Rather, they are opportunities to ex explore further and practice. And we do, though, uh, have seen um, internships materialize through these uh, job and career fairs. And so you see different organizations uh, presenting or, or present at different career fairs. We then organize our students to visit both public agencies as well as private consulting firms in trying to really get better contact, a better understanding of their work. And last but not least, we do a great deal helping our students with writing resume, putting together a cover letter, um, and then we have a uh, online platform called Engage that posts different jobs uh, and internship opportunities in real time and updated uh, regularly and throughout the year. And uh, here is just an example of the placements of some of our recent graduates. And uh, obviously, this is far from comprehensive. But you do see many of our graduates do work in New York and beyond. And many of them do work in um, private sector. And many of them do work outside of the United States. And then last, we um, connect our 
students with alumni frequently. We have a mentorship program in which current students and alumni work on one on one kind of a relationship, and then we host receptions. Uh, with alumni and students at um, annual conferences of American Planning Association and other events, for instance, yesterday evening with the talk. So last, I just want to quickly to quickly say that you are here for two years. It's not only education, it's a wonderful community of students. And student life is very active and lively, and the student program council organizes town hall meetings to try to connect students to other, uh, ish, other uh, initiatives across the school and to get student feedback on curriculum. Student clubs and organizations organize uh, volunteer, volunteer work. This is our um, very nice home, the UP lounge, plus classroom, plus uh, you can't see the classroom or the computer lab, but this is end of year show. And in the foreground, you can see the data analytics work examples from last semester. Really fascinating kinds of work they're doing with making sensors, taking sensors out to collect data, bring data back for analysis. And we have a student magazine called Urban, and it's very, very uh, active in terms of putting together uh, timely and important coverage on planning issues. And this is our class. And I want to say every year we have about 50 or so students. And they are very diverse from all walks of life, from all different majors in an undergraduate, all the way from arts to biology, to philosophy, to what have you, everything. So if you're interested in urban planning, you should uh, uh, contact and get in touch with us, and we will be happy to answer any questions you have. So for that, I want to then now introduce four of our current students uh, who will then answer some of the questions and many of you have posted. And maybe I can introduce them uh, um, actually, I will have them introduce themselves, which probably is a better way to go. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily Juncker, and I'm a dual degree uh, urban planning and historic preservation student. This is my third year in the program. Okay. Yeah. I'm Connor Allerton. Um, I'm a, a second year urban planning uh, student. Hi, my name is Yining Lei, and I'm a second year urban planning student. So Yining is from China. China. Yeah, I'm yeah. from China. Uh, my name is Garrett Raya, um, second year urban planning student from San Diego, California, urban informatics concentration. Good. All right, so we have, so what I will do is probably I will ask a question, just sort of maybe point, you know, ask one of you to answer it first, and everyone else who would want to address that. Chip, I know, chip in. So maybe, um, uh, Garrett, so yeah. what do you think makes GSAP's urban planning unique, right? So when you were applying, you probably looked at other programs. So why did you pick this program over those offered by other universities? Okay. Um, yeah, so I was really attracted to the urban informatics concentration. And not so much, I guess, that there was a formal concentration, but the courses that were um, available in it and um, proposed in the schedule um, really interested me. I um, have a background in economics, but I was doing some planning work before coming out here and wanted to do something um, that was a little more quantitative and um, kind of technically challenging um, compared to what I was doing previously. And then I got some good advice to look at the different programs, um, alumni kind of on LinkedIn, and kind of evaluate the jobs um, they were falling into. And um, that kind of sealed the deal for me with choosing this program. Um, not just I was attracted to certain jobs that alumni were falling into, but kind of the breadth of jobs. Um, and I felt like it was, I could graduate and still um, like have a good foundation and be agile and kind of go into different um, industries. Anyone else? Um, and as an international student, I think the fact of studying in New York City is definitely very appealing to me. And the program here is definitely the best place to practice our urban planning skills in a world-leading city, city, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, 
maybe uh, I can ask Connor, what are your favorite or least favorite aspects of the program? Um, well, I'll start with favorites. Um, I, I also, I'm, so I'm, from, I'm originally from New York City, and um, part of why I came to the program is because I wanted to stay New York centric, and I think the program really offers a, a really great um, breadth of you know expertise surrounding um, New York City specifically. I think that in most of my courses so far, I've been able to sort of take the knowledge that I'm gaining um, in that course and sort of direct it toward New York or look at New York specific contexts. Um, I think that's been really helpful just to for me to feel like I can kind of build my own expertise through that. I think um, that's one aspect that I've uh, really enjoyed. I, I also, I, I feel like we've spoken about sort of the diversity of backgrounds um, in the program that's really opened my perspective. I think uh, coming from undergrad, you know, it was easy to find it kind of fall into like a homogeneity of ideas. Um, in my circles. And I think I've been able to have like really interesting conversations with other students in class and outside. Um, you know, just differing of opinions and being able to like just discuss over like any subject matter, um, kind of expand my perspectives um, on like a sort of international stage and more local. Um, yeah, I, I really appreciate the, the student body at the program. I think, um, yeah, it's really like helped me. Mm -hmm. um, least favorite? I don't know. Um, I don't know <laughs> how much um, to think about. I think, um, I don't know. I feel, I feel like there's certain things that kind of come with um, pluses and minuses. I think that one thing that uh, Wei Ping has mentioned is how the, the faculty structure um, in that we have a smaller um, full-time faculty but more adjuncts but you know maybe um, to some extent I'd, I'd see that as it would be more favorable to have uh, more full-time faculty but at the same time um, you know having people coming in and out so frequently really gives you this like um, sort of experience that you wouldn't otherwise have uh, when you know you have the same people making up the majority of the program and have been there for so long. You know you have these different um, sort of perspectives and ideas coming in and out that really help to evolve the program pretty quickly. Um, so I guess I can turn that negative into a positive. It's a good way of putting it. I mean, I really, it's a balance in that sense. So maybe I can ask Emily. So how do you think the program is preparing you for real world practice? Speaking, you know, from experience in the program, because you also worked so before you came to the program, right? Yeah. So actually, um, I worked for six years before I came to GSAP. I were, I studied photography in my undergraduate degree, and I worked in the architecture and planning industry. Um, but when I came back to school, um, it was kind of a different type of um, work that we were going to be doing. And I think the studio experience was probably the, the most um, effective course in preparing for the real world practice in urban planning. I was in the studio that went to Hong Kong. And the way that the studio is set up is we're given a client. And it's a real world client who is actually going to be, who are actually going to be interacting with and who's actually going to be reading whatever um, plans and proposals that we make. Um, and when we went to Hong Kong, we were able to meet with uh, the de director of the um, Urban Renewal Authority, um, the director of the MTR, which is the Transit Authority, and other very high-level people within um, the planning realm in Hong Kong, and also to meet with um, people who were part of the communities that were being affected by the projects that we were looking at. So um, we were able to get kind of both of those perspectives and put together recommendations um, for how that community can move forward. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, maybe Yile, um, uh, Yining, uh, maybe I can ask you, because you came from a non-planning uh, background, right? So to yes. what extent 
Do students in the MSUP program have ex experience in another field and are able to apply this outside knowledge lessons in urban planning itself? Um, yes, um, I came from an engineering background. I studied civil engineering during my undergrad studies. Um, I think, uh, first of all, I think the urban planning field is very broad. It is uh, like the, it has something with the real estate development. It also, um, it's also, um, is tightly connected to um, engineering itself. Um, I didn't take any engineering courses um, that overlapped with urban planning in this program, honestly, but I do take a real estate uh, course that is, um, that I, from my perspective, combine both urban planning and real estate development. And I think um, it is very interesting to learn the real estate development from an urban planning urban planner's perspective. And this is what I think that, um, that can apply the outside knowledge lessons in urban planning itself. Because I uh, learned something about uh, real estate development before during my undergrad student, but mostly from an engineer's perspective. And now I can learn about something that uh, is totally different, but still in the same process, but from another perspective. Mm. Anybody else wants to chime in on that? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll chime in, I think. So I, in um, the US, I think there's not that many um, undergrad degrees specifically in urban planning. Mm -hmm. And our school is very international in itself, or the program's very international. So um, in a lot of classes, you kind of learn the different perspectives, not only in how cities have developed in different places across the world, but kind of how different disciplines look at urban planning problems. So I'm from economics and um, so, you know, it kind of has that lens and something more like empirically driven. Mm -hmm. And we have architects that um, really lean towards design and stuff. And so your education is not just um, in the classroom and, and the readings you have, but it's a lot of just getting exposure to different disciplines um, through conversations you have with your fellow students. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can ask um, any of you to address um, how you choose your concentration, right? what kind of exposure you had during your first year, and did you make any change uh, you know, after first year in terms of your concentration? Um, okay. I think I came into the program expecting to do a lot more um, international development focused work, and I'm still kind of on the fence about how I feel about doing international development work, but in my first year, I kind of targeted two of the international development con concentration courses, the Introduction to International Development, and um, it was the History of urban slums or yeah, urban informality. informality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I'm also currently in a studio that is paired with the Historic Preservation Program where we traveled to Sierra Leone and did some work with World Monuments Fund. So I'm still dappling in that as a career path. However, um, I'm, I'm still, I, I still wish that I did um, some of the other concentrations and took more courses in them. Okay. I'll say, yeah, so some, this kind of refers back to the favorite and least favorite aspects of the program. I don't know if we want to go back there, but I will. Yeah, sure. um, so the, this program, I think comparatively, is very flexible. Um, so you're, compared to other schools, you really are able to explore different concentrations in your time here. Um, we do have like core curriculum, though, that is front heavy. So you will, having, you will have to take um, those in the first year. and. Um, kind of be smart about um, the decisions you make for your elect elective classes in, in your first year. Um, so I encourage you um, to really think about that and strategize. Um, and then my favorite aspect of the program is actually what Connor said was his least favorite, I think, since I'll just I'll jump in there. <laughs> um, the, the different faculty we have here part-time, they're really um, respected and kind of renowned in their fields and their niches. And so if you're thinking about careers after, um, I, we have career services here, but a lot of the professors um, are like really encouraging and want to help and kind of offer um, their assistance. And like if, if you're interested in, in the field that they're working in or, or doing something similar to them, they're really enthusiastic about the opportunity of you kind of joining with them and, and them finding you a spot. In it, and so um, I think schools where they're mostly 
full-time faculty. Um, they're kind of more stuck in academia, and, it, and you don't get that kind of opportunity that we have here. Yeah, um, maybe let me just add really quickly to this point. Um, we, I also, as a faculty, see this as a strength because, uh, for instance, we have a group of students who want to address more uh, issues related to climate change and resilience, and we are going to look into planning two new courses for next year. Mm -hmm. And the way that we go is either for, through student interest or our faculty identification, and then I go out there really uh, very strategically look for uh, really qualified seasoned practitioners possibly already having had some teaching experience. And so when they first come in, I usually work with them quite um, extensively on their syllabus, on their teaching uh, sort of skills, the kind of techniques they can use. And so our adjunct faculty is a very committed group. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, they really don't just come in and they leave and they really engage with students extensively. And many of them then end up serving as readers for our students' theses and capstones. So obviously, we cannot keep just adding courses. We do have to let some courses go. So generally, the agility comes through also students voting with their feet. So you know, certain topics become less uh, of interest to students, uh, as well as uh, you know, the coverage being not quite as updated. We do start rotating them into every other year, and then, or potentially some would not be offered. But that also is, uh, in a way, uh, it's advantage that because we are supplemented by a lot of courses beyond GSAP that our students can take. I don't think anybody asked those questions. I just wanted to kind of say that almost all our students have taken one course, yeah, at least one beyond planning or beyond GSAP, right? Yeah. So, all right, let's. Um, uh, here, I, maybe I can get Connor to uh, uh, answer this question. What role do social justice design and ecological reform have in the urban planning program? Just whatever you, your thought is. Right. Um, well, I think, I guess, to think more broadly about social justice and reform in the program, I think, um, like you mentioned, community development probably has the strongest highlight of um, social justice in of the concentrations, but I think that it is something that, and that's what drew me, that's part of what drew me to the program and what drew me to uh, concentrate in community development. Um, but I do think that it is sort of something that has become kind of um, sort of threaded throughout um, the program as a whole, I find that especially, you know, it's it's driven by both faculty and students, this um, interest in kind of considering social justice and sort of these um, injustices that we see in cities across the globe um, kind of becoming relevant in whatever topic you're specifically addressing in that course. I think that in you know, while my my courses that I've elected have sort of had this emphasis on social justice, I, I haven't had um, you know an experience where I felt like that was left out of the conversation. I think that um, you know both students and faculty kind of bring that to the table actively. Um, there's always an opportunity where that becomes addressed. I mean, I have I've I've been in more in classes like. Um, Professor Buakar's on spatial exclusion and planning um, that was very explicitly about social justice um, and the, the the ways in which planning has historically served as um, tools of exclusion for certain populations. Um, but then you know there's other opportunities where you know you might be talking about something very technical, but you can always bring into the conversation, you know. Who does this impact? How does it impacting those people? Um, like, how can we, you know, transform the the practice itself to better include, um, you know, these conversations? And I think that I I feel like I've I've really been able to explore um, those questions through my courses. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. 
Yes, I want to add to that. I think social justice is a very high level topic that is covered in almost every concentration courses. Uh, for example, in some data analytics related courses, we talked about um, how data scientists will, will interpret their findings to the communities and to ordinary citizens who don't have any knowledge about um, the data. Um, there will be a social justice issue if their um, data scientists intentionally uh, talk, um, like to interpret it in a different way, and which will not benefit the residents. And also in community planning, uh, community development concentration, we would talk about uh, spatial social justice. Um, that is also a very hard issue in urban planning, and also in history. History courses will talk about the social justice issues um, during the history of planning. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, let's move on a little bit to talk about your you know, student life during the two years or here, broadly speaking, student life. So maybe I can ask Emily or, or anybody else to talk about, uh, uh, I know Yining as well, how can graduate students participate uh, in the school's research and teaching um, activities as assistants, yeah? Um, so most of the research and teaching assistant programs go to second year students in a rare incidence. They might go to a first year urban planning student. However, I don't, I don't think I've seen that happen. Um, and usually I, I believe it's based on kind of merit. So if you do really well um, in your first year and professors recognize the way that you work with other students and the way that you take the lead on things, then um, you will apply in the summer. Everyone is open to apply to the position. Um, you write a cover letter, send in your resume, and at the end of the summer, the assistantships are assigned. And um, so I've been a teaching assistant for Wei Ping for um, the past, well, year and a half. And um, that's allowed me to do a variety of things that are um, more program related, like overall program um, activities, um, a lot of, and also doing some work, um, teaching a workshop in um, a video workshop that kind of went along with uh, the studio course. Um, yes, I worked as a, a research assistant for Professor Lance Freeman this semester. Yes, I think their application, um, Emily has well explained the application process. Um, and I also say, uh, I also want to say that if you are really interested in the research field that the professor may have, you can, uh, actually every professor in this program is really responsive. You can email him um, saying that you are very interested in your research and can I have, like, uh, participate in your research projects that you are currently working on. Uh, actually, I did this uh, in the first master. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit what you do with Professor Friedman in terms of the research? Oh, okay. Um, for this master, um, uh, I Assisted him, I assisted him in working on a case study of a disabled accessible public space. Um, yes. Okay, good. Um, so maybe I can ask, uh, well, I think all of you did some uh, internship or other activities during the summer, but maybe I can ask Garrett, I know you were fighting fire somewhere in the uh. summer between the first and second year. So basically the question is what are students encouraged to do in the summer sem summer between the first and second year of the program? Yeah, so um, we have uh, workshops here that are, are kind of more research oriented. You can pair up with faculty and, and do something really exciting. A lot of them is international based, which is really cool. Um, I did an internship, which I think is pretty encouraged here as well, um, back home. And I think, uh, you know, the, the program itself really just encourages you to continue to explore and, and treat the summer as um, an educational opportunity for yourself. And um, so, you know, that could be getting an internship, doing strictly urban planning or zoning code or something like that, or, or maybe um, kind of exploring a skill you, you picked up um, during the school year and maybe doing like data analysis or something that, that might not be particularly in an urban planning context, but kind of building the skills in a real world environment. Um, and then maybe you'll, you'll transfer that into a, a job in urban planning. Um, yeah. Anyone else wants to add to that? 
Okay. Um, so maybe I can ask um, Connor, because I know you are in the uh, uh, fellowship program with the community board mm -hmm. right now. So uh, can you tell us? So the question is, do students attend to work an internship part-time role throughout the semester, mm -hmm. right? Can you tell us right. what you do and how you sort of juggle that with mm -hmm. school, right? And yeah. editorship of Urban. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a couple positions right now. And I think that, I think that the, the program does have a lot, like, it is very flexible in curriculum, but also in, you know, it's, it's a professional program. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a graduate program, so it's, um, it's not the same as undergrad, where you're, um, you're, kind of, you're, you're kind of isolated to one thing for, the, for those four years. I think you're, you're given that flexibility to, um, you know, work and do school at the same time. Right now, I am part of the community planning fellowship, um, where I'm partnered with a community board. Um, my my community board is Manhattan Community Board 11 in East Harlem, um, and you're assigned. And the the program takes students from multiple schools, but there's five of us from Columbia, um, where and you know you're assigned a specific project on the community board. So I'm looking at um, a proposal or potential uh, sort of investigation and proposal of a business improvement district in East Harlem. Um, and you know, I, I spend one, one day a week in the office and I work remotely as well. And I feel that it really, it, it does, like I have um, a lot of space to do something like that in the program. I think that it, like I'm, I'm able to balance my uh, schoolwork and opportunities like that pretty um, smoothly. Um, yeah, I think it, and it, and it, it feels like a really good balance. I'm able to take um, what I'm learning in my courses and apply it to how I go about my project. You know, there's a lot of independence in the program, in the fellowship. So I'm able to really like take my own perspective mm -hmm. and kind of be treated almost as like this consultant position, which feels very professional. Um, but also, you know, getting that real world experience and applying it to my courses as well. I think it, it, it's like a mutually beneficial um, experience. And I do um, the Urban Magazine, which um, has been a lot of fun. And it's, a, it's like, an, it's a nice break from regular coursework or um, work with the program. And it's, it's you know, um, I think it's a really great um, platform for students. And yeah, I'm a great, I'm a huge advocate for the magazine. Um, we're excited at this, if like, just to touch on it, this um, semester we're looking at, the theme is obsolescence, and we're looking at um, ways in which planning practices have become obsolete in the face of things like climate change. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it, it's continually very relevant to the, to the practice. Um, students from across the program are encouraged to submit, and it becomes this really cool, sort of combination of different perspectives and opinions that, from students. So, yeah. Yeah. so let me just add really quickly to what Connor has said. So um, uh, Emily and uh, Yining and Connor and everybody, lots of students in the program are able to uh, take on uh, either the teaching assistantship or uh, research assistant. We have about 18 a single semester position every year in the program. Generally, we're giving to second year students. And then we recommend to the New York uh, Community Fellowship Program four to five students. As Connor was saying, there are five of them now. Uh, and then um, the Urban Magazine editors, or three of them, are also uh, somewhat paid position. Uh, and so then there are all kinds of uh, hourly kinds of uh, work opportunities. So. Uh, some are in the Center for Spatial Research mm -hmm. and, um, and in Earth Institute. I know uh, Mike, our um, program manager, also our own alum, uh, worked in the School of Public Health during the summer. So there are lots of opportunities. I think almost, I would say, 50 to 60 percent of st our students while studying full time has some you know, al other form of engagement of either learning or practice-oriented uh, engagement uh, with um, the rest of the world. So um, maybe I can ask uh, Emily, so what kind of support do you get as a dual degree student? Um, so yes, I am a dual degree student. Um, 
I would say, so the way that the program worked for me was um, in my first year, I started doing the urban planning program. So I was really like embedded into my class in urban planning and I did the core courses with them. And I took a few electives within the historic preservation program that year, just to kind of get to know the other people in that program and, and to start thinking about the concepts there. Um, However, in my second year, it was kind of a big transition because I, the historic preservation program has a lot of core requirements and your first semester there is completely historic preservation. So it kind of like sweeps you up and puts you into this whole another kind of discipline um, where you have to kind of learn a new um, thing. But I tried to stay connected to the urban planning program and um, I saw advisement from um, professors in both programs and I continued to do so and to keep in touch with the students from both programs to kind of stay connected. Um, and now in my final year, I am doing a combined thesis with both historic preservation and urban planning. And that's been great because I have a lot of support from um, my the other advisees of my thesis advisor in urban planning and also from um, the historic preservation program and those two advisees work together to um, give me feedback. Okay, great. So moving on to housing. So maybe I can ask Garrett or Yi Ning because you know, one is um, domestic student and mm -hmm. international. How, how did you find your housing? How's ha housing handled? You know, and what might be some challenges or opportunities? Yeah, um, so I um, am housed through Columbia, the University Housing, um, and it's something, yeah, that you should really consider. I think especially if you're not from the city and evaluate and look at your options, um, I think it's pretty competitive. And so that was, I think, like a, a concern for me um, from being from Southern California and my whole life and kind of knowing the cities well and being well connected um, socially. So it was um, a big plus for me that um, I'd be able to get kind of set up here and, and not have to worry so much about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I also lived in their university housing. Um, I think compared to other programs which are much bigger than ours, um, the application is very smooth. Um, almost every international student who applied for university housing can get an apartment or dormitory through um, their application. Yeah, very good. So our last question, I think, yeah, um, okay. Um, maybe for everyone uh, is that, um, what's your plan when you graduate, right? So the question is actually, what fields do graduates tend to enter upon completion of the program? And where do you, you know, find, hope to find employment? So maybe I can ask you, both in terms of like what kind of work, like maybe what sector, right? Or where do you expect to look for work? Maybe everyone? Uh, okay, I guess, I guess I'll guess i begin. Uh -huh. The first thing that came to mind um, when reading this question right now is that um, two of our professors at CO teach um, a course that the three of us are in are from the program, they're graduates, um, but professionally they're grade A data scientists that you know currently don't really intersect a whole lot with urban planning, but they have that strong background. And they, they kind of have their foundation in data science from this program and have really just evolved from it. And so I think that kind of touches on um, the quality of uh, the program and the things you're learning here can really do well in other um, industries and sectors, and, and that was so, that kind of flexibility really drew me um, to the program, and kind of like reflecting back on my process of looking at where alums go and, and what fields. Um, personally, I I love um, urban issues and um, kind of trying to uh, help others and and the disadvantaged, and so I would love to see myself kind of intersecting with urban planning, if not immediately after graduation, um, not too long after. Um, but I'm also really interested in, in technology and um, data science, and, and those opportunities are, um, are out there. Yeah. Um, 
For me, I did an internship at the Parks Advocacy Group during the summer. So I kind of grew the interest in the parks and open spaces and also environment. So I would like to pursue my career in that field. And also for the parks and open spaces, actually a vulnerable um, infrastructure, um, comparatively vulnerable infrastructure in China compared to housing and other infrastructures like transportation. So I want to apply what I have learned here maybe like three years or five years later in my hometown. Um, I think for me, uh, I want to stay in New York um, <laughs> just for the rest of my life. Yeah, just a um, huge fan. But I think, um, I think part of the question, like where do graduates geographically find employment? I think that um, generally with planning programs because, you know, um, they are kind of geographically specific. Um, you know, like, I've, like I mentioned previously, I've been able to build like a solid foundation of, you know, knowledge around planning issues in New York City. And so hopefully I will explore that in, well, one of my, content, one of my um, focuses or like um, passions, I guess, is housing and um, like affordable housing specifically. And I, uh, I, I took a course this semester, it was, a half sem it was a half semester course on affordable housing in high demand cities. And that was taught by um, Pranima Kapoor and Adam Weinstein, who are the former um, head of the Department of City Planning in the city and um, the CEO of the largest affordable housing nonprofit in the country. And so they, they, they have been a great resource for me. Um, I've been in conversation with them about exploring opportunities after the program. And you know, they're so well connected. They have so much great advice for you. Um, so far they've been like, go to the public sector because there's, um, you know, that's a, a place where you can find so much exposure early on. Mm -hmm. um, and they're always hiring. Um, so we'll see what happens, but I think public sector, nonprofit, um, New York locally, yeah. Good, great. Um, I think going back to what Garrett said earlier about looking at everyone's LinkedIn page um, who graduated from Columbia and seeing that there was like a really broad range of things speaks re really well to the fact that in this program you learn a lot of different skill sets that you can apply in a lot of different places. And um, also from my background working in photography, I, I, I have an understanding of freelance work and kind of like kind of a consulting mindset. So that's something I'm interested in. I'm also interested in remaining in academia and doing um, more uh, long-term research projects. Um, like Connor, I'm also interested in affordable housing issues and have become pretty involved with like the local affordable housing um, tenant advocacy kind of community mm -hmm. here. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, I know, I, I, I mean, I'm just really encouraged by our students' comments. I also wanted to find, you know, a final, you know, sort of comment to say that Another really strong uh, point of this program is we want our students to be prepared not only for traditional roles as planners, but also emerging roles. Mm -hmm. And that could be in planning uh, organizations or beyond. So in, we actually recently did an um, alumni survey. Many of our alumni work in uh, law firms, real estate development firms, and uh, uh, data science startups, um, but very much connected to urban issues, to planning issues. And so we want our students to be able to have the core skill sets that can be applied to planning uh, challenges across different sectors of jobs. And as I would say, that's a really uh, strong identity now of our program. So again, thank you for joining us for this past hour. And I would encourage you to and get in touch with us, either with our uh, director of admission or our program manager. You can find us on the website. We have an excellent uh, information booklet of the program right on the uh, program landing page of the website. And uh, uh, if you want to visit us, uh, get in touch. And if you have time, you are in New York. Next Tuesday, we have an in-person open house um, in which uh, students get to, you know, uh, those those of you who have time get to sit in some classes and really experience what the program is like. So, so long, and I hope to hear from you, and good luck with your applications. <laughs>